What is up XRP? Welcome back to another video. I just recorded this whole video and then realized I was muted the whole time. So that really sucks. If you want to support the video, hit the like button. TGIF, hope you have a great weekend. Hitting the like button supports me a lot, helps the video do better. So I really do appreciate it. So there was a tweet today, the European Central Bank selects Amazon to develop its Euro e-payment system. I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about the XRP ledger wallet addresses are going absolutely crazy. A lot of updates on the SEC. Yesterday, there was a Senate Banking Committee hearing and Gary Gensler talked to the Supreme Court. I also have a lawyer weighing in on the Chamber of Digital Commerce. They filed to intervene in the Ripple lawsuit yesterday and how that action, how that intervention is going to affect the lawsuit. Um, the head Ripple lawyer has some things to say about Gary Gensler and then some news from the Justice Department. All right. Hit that like button. Let's hop right into it. So the European Central Bank has selected Amazon to develop its digital euro payment system. What are you doing with Ripple? Check out this clip. All right. It really just sums up the whole situation. We talked to a lot of our customers uh, around the world, and, and I was surprised that even large customers, it takes them three to five days to get the payment where it needs to be. And, uh, you know, this was the case of uh, Amazon uh, paying merchants cross border and taking Right, so they choose Amazon for their digital euro payment system. But here we have proof that Amazon has been one of their clients in the past who struggled to be able to do these fast cross-border payments. So maybe they have some more insider information that we don't have. Um, and now we have some updates about the lawsuit. So Republican chairman in Congress on August 11th of last year, Republican leader McHenry released a statement slamming SEC Chairman Gary Gensler in his power grab of all exchanges of digital assets, right? Attacking Coinbase, attacking any exchange that lists these unregistered securities like XRP, uh, because not all of them are securities. And it links a tweet, Republican Patrick McHenry on the Biden administration's digital assets reports. And whether you like Biden or not, you got to give him credit for at least putting out that digital asset report. I would say that was definitely more bullish news than bearish news, at least to recognize them. And just to say, hey, it benefits us to make regulation that fosters growth, that fosters innovation, instead of scaring these companies away to where they go to other countries and develop their technologies there. Okay, it's definitely an advantage to have innovative technology in your own country. You want to develop that on your own soil if you can. Um, and then the Justice Department. So the U.S. Justice Department, a little bit late on this, they are establishing a nationwide digital asset coordinator network to combat the growing threat posed by illicit use of digital assets. Now, is this really a growing threat? I feel like in the early days of Bitcoin, it was used on the dark web. It was used on the Silk Road. Uh, it still is today, but... What we do know about Bitcoin today that we kind of thought was a lot more true in 2010 is that it's not private, right? It's a lot easier to track these blockchain transactions and organizations like the Inter Internal Revenue Service, the tax people, they can see this stuff um, very easily. I always say men lie, women lie, but the blockchain don't lie. Numbers don't lie, right? Blockchain never lies. Men and women do, though. So um, I think this is a little bit stupid. However, it is good to see that the Justice Department is recognizing digital assets and we want more regulatory clarity. Maybe they can help provide some of that here. Now, an update from the head Ripple lawyer, Stuart Alderati. So yesterday there was a Senate Banking Committee hearing. And in this hearing, Gary Gensler, the head of the SEC, he misstated to the Supreme Court, not to anyone, to the Supreme Court, he made this mistake um, when he explained the Howey test. He explained the Howey test and he there's four prongs to the Howey test and he likes to group up two of them together. OK, was this intentional or does Gary Gensler really not know the law? Now, Gary Gensler was a professor at MIT, one of the best schools in the world, and he taught blockchain courses. OK, now he's the head of this regulatory group, the SEC. I think he knows the law, right? But it's a great question. What's worse? The fact that he might not know the law or that it could be intentional and he's still misstating it. Um, and this is Stuart Alderati, the head Ripple lawyer. Um, and now this is what we're seeing in real time, guys. The fusion of these old financial institutions who have ruled the world, the visas, the MasterCards, the central banks of the world. 
and the internet boom all over again with blockchain technology. Here we have the chief digital officer at MasterCard. 20 years ago, there wouldn't even be a chief digital officer. What is this guy doing? He's speaking at the Ripple Swell convention, okay? It, we're seeing real time the weaving, the overlap of this old technology, all these companies that have ruled finance, starting to adopt, starting to at least recognize and respect the value that cryptocurrency can provide. You have coins like Doge, SafeMoon, Shiba, who do nothing but people made money off them, right? That's lucky. That's like playing a slot machine at a casino. You want to look at cryptocurrency, like what is this token? What problem is it actually solving? What technology is it adding? Is this token being used for anything, right? And if it is used for something, is there value behind that? With XRP, it's really fast, really cheap cross-border payments. And that is a problem that needs to be solved. How do they do cross-border payments now? They use SWIFT from 1970, it's 50 years old, right? There's a big opportunity for innovation here. Um, and so I just wanted to harp on this. This guy's speaking at the Ripple Swell Convention. He is the keynote speaker. And for the SEC XRP lawsuit, so a lawyer explains how Ripple could settle. They could say the initial sale of XRP was an unregistered security, but as long as they recognize one difference, the separation between the initial sale of a token and how the token is transacted, right? We've talked about many times, they can admit, the SEC can rule, Ripple's initial sales of XRP were an investment contract. Just like they have said, the initial sales of Ethereum were an investment contract, but now Ethereum's decentralized enough to where Ether is not a security. As long as they say that the transactions of a token are different than the initial sale of a token, then it doesn't matter if Ripple has to settle and say, yeah, the initial sales were unregistered securities, but how the token is transacted, right? The investment contract, um, the independent circulation of XRP is not the same as Ripple's transactions with XRP, all right? When we transact with XRP, we don't do it because we expect some sort of equity or some return from the company Ripple. A lot of these people using the ledger are doing it for the fast advantage of cheap payments. And this just backs it up right here. XRP wallet addresses soar past 4.3 million as on-chain activities see remarkable boost. According to data from crypto market intelligence provider Masari, at the time of presenting this, which is today, breaking news. If you guys like breaking news every day, subscribe, hit the bell. If you don't hit the bell, YouTube will never notify you. Thank you in advance. XRP wallet addresses sit at 4.3 million. Among these 4.3 million addresses, 300 addresses hold over 10 million XRP. Also, the number of addresses with XRP worth at least $1 is about 4.3 million as well. And as of the time of writing, there have been about 67,000 active XRP addresses in the past 24 hours, all right? This is a token that's being used. Men lie, women lie, the blockchain and numbers do not lie. That's all I got for you guys. Have a great weekend. If you're still watching the video, thank you for making, making it to the end. It supports a lot. Make it known that you finished my entire video by commenting TGIF, thank God it's Friday below. It really does support the video when you watch it, it's full duration, so thank you in advance. Have a great weekend. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your families. Comment TGIF below. God bless you all. Until next time.